In this video, we're going to set up iCloud. Tap the Settings app, then scroll down and select iCloud. In this video, I'm going to explain every step and every option. That way, in the future, if you ever want to know what an option does, you'll be able to refer back to this video anytime. First, we're going to sign in with our Apple ID. Your Apple ID is the email address used for iTunes. If you've bought music or anything else on iTunes, you have an Apple ID. This email address is also the one used to download apps on your iPhone. If your ID is different from the one listed, just delete it and enter the Apple ID you want to use with iCloud. iCloud is mainly used for backup and auto-transferring downloaded items or pictures taken on your iPhone. For more information about iCloud, YouTube iCloud and watch Apple's official video. After signing in, iCloud will verify a password is correct and then it may prompt you to set up a mobile me email address. This email address is free and could be useful later. I recommend signing up for it even if you're not going to use it right now. iCloud will then ask if you wish to merge your contacts, reminders and bookmarks with iCloud. I recommend selecting merge. Not only will this back up all your contacts, reminders and bookmarks, but will also download any you have already backed up on iCloud. This is very useful if you're activating iCloud on a replacement iPhone. All your contacts, reminders, and bookmarks can be downloaded on your phone simply by logging into iCloud. Plus, you have a remote backup in case anything happens. After merging is complete, it will ask you for permission to use your location for a free service called Find My iPhone. This is a free service that can locate your iPhone if it's ever lost or stolen. It can also remotely wipe the data on your phone. If you ever lose your phone, you can see it instantly on a map. And if you still can't find it, perhaps if it's under the sofa cushion, you can request for it to beep loudly, even if it's unsilent. You can also send a free message to your phone that appears as a prompt that will say anything you want, perhaps providing details for the person who finds your lost iPhone to contact you. Find My iPhone can also remotely wipe your iPhone securely so that if you have private data, it remains private. It is an amazing service. It doesn't affect your battery life unless you actually use it and look for your iPhone and it's completely free. Now you need to select which iCloud services you'd like to use. Mail assists you in creating a free at me Dot com email address. It may request you to set this up. However, you don't need to use it if you don't want to. The email is web-based and it's the only free email service available online that does not have any ads anywhere whatsoever. So if ads bother you, this is the email address for you. Next is contacts. This saves all the contacts on your phone to an iTunes server. Your information is secure and this will allow you to look up contacts online in your me.com account. It also serves as a great backup an easy transfer mechanism for a replacement iPhone. Calendars works similarly to contacts. It syncs everything you save in your calendar to your me.com account and you can access it online or in an email client like Outlook or iCal whenever you want. Reminders works the same way as calendars. It will sync reminders. It will even sync reminders from Siri. Bookmarks will sync your bookmarks and reading list with any other installation of Safari on a PC, a Mac, an iPod Touch, an iPod iPad. This means you have all your bookmarks and saved web pages wherever you are. Notes work similar to calendars, syncing all your data and allowing them to be viewed online through the me.com website and through Outlook on a PC or Mac or iCal on the Mac. When you activate PhotoStream, it will sync the last thousand pictures you took on iCloud. iCloud will then download these pictures onto your other iOS devices and maintain it so only the last thousand are available. So every time you take a new picture, your oldest one is deleted. However, if you have a PC or Mac with iCloud installed on it, iCloud will download all the pictures you take and never delete any. This allows all your pictures to be on your computer without having to copy them over. And most people want to keep their pictures forever on their computer, but not on their phone, which is why iCloud saves any new pictures for 30 days to give your home computer time to connect and download any new pictures before deleting them from the iCloud server. The photos stream by on your iPhone and save permanently on your home computer. If you move pictures from your camera roll to a new album on your phone, they will never be deleted. As I have over 3,000 pictures in my camera roll and I want to keep them there, 
I'm not going to activate PhotoStream. If you choose this option, don't forget to manually back up your pictures to your computer regularly. Documents and data allow your apps to save saved games and other information on iCloud. I recommend enabling this. Any app that saves data to iCloud will prompt you and ask for your permission before it starts saving to iCloud. Next, the aforementioned Find My iPhone, which I'm leaving on too. When activating any of these options, it may take a couple of seconds for iCloud to merge and sync the data. Storage and data. iCloud provides you with 5 gigabytes of storage for free, which does not include anything purchased from iTunes. This means you will use very little of this space. If you ever need more space, more can always be purchased by clicking here and you can see how much space is currently in use and how much it costs to buy more. Backup allows you to back up your iPhone to iCloud. This means your iPhone will not be backed up by your computer with iTunes. It will only back up on iCloud. I'm going to leave my backup with my computer because that's a big download for me. If you're on your first iPhone, it will be a lot faster and easier if you just use iCloud to back up your iPhone data. This backs up all the information on your phone, so if you ever replace your phone, you can just restore this backup, resync with iTunes, and it should look and feel exactly like your old phone. Even your apps will be in the same place on the screen where you left them. If you set up iCloud on an iPhone, then set up iCloud on another iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, all your iCloud data automatically syncs and merges with any existing data on that device. So, all the information already on your iPad will now be on everything else, and all your data already synced with iCloud will now be on your iPad. iCloud lets you have your stuff everywhere. And that's it. iCloud is now set up on your iPhone. After pressing the home button, iCloud may still need to download or upload information in the background, but after a few minutes it will finish and you'll be completely set up. Be aware, if you activate iCloud, your phone will constantly connect to the internet and use small amounts of data every time you change anything in any app that uses iCloud. This is good to keep in mind. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other iPhone tutorials at www.youtube.com slash A562178.